My name is Derek Firon, and this is La Lectura, reading in New York Tabaquero Factories, prepared as part of the class Intro to Chicanx Latinx Histories, History 17CH, at the Claremont Colleges. Puerto Rico has endured a turbulent history in the past few centuries. First under Spanish rule, the U.S. military took control of the island after the Spanish-American War in 1898. However, American corporations were taking root on the island of Puerto Rico even before the change of colonial possession. Like other Caribbean islands, American industrialists sought to benefit from a labor force in Puerto Rico that they saw as pliable. Tobacco, specifically the making of cigars, was especially lucrative. However, the invasion of American capital and corporations sharply changed the structure of the Puerto Rican economy. Food crops grown in rural areas of the island were replaced by cash crops like tobacco and sugar. Many farmers and rural Puerto Rican laborers became unemployed as tobacco processing and other employment moved to cities on and off the island. The unemployment and depressed wages that faced many workers led to a sharp increase in migration. Much of this group of Puerto Ricans went to the mainland of the United States. One destination of Puerto Ricans was New York City, specifically in the neighborhood of El Barrio, or Spanish Harlem, and Brooklyn. Cigar factories grew out of Caribbean tobacco industries with centers in Cuba and Puerto Rico. The growth of cigar making in the Caribbean applied to places like New York as well. Los tabaqueros, or cigar makers, worked in factories in El Barrio rolling tobacco into cigars. The work was largely silent. So, to pass the time, tabaqueros paid young men and women to read to them while they worked in the factory. These lectores would often read an assortment of literature, spanning from famous novels, to newspapers, to political and social theory. Bernardo Vega, a tabaquero and early Puerto Rican migrant to New York City, described the type of works for, read for the workers of El Morito, a cigar factory. Quote, he, the reader, dedicated the morning session to current news and events of the day, which he received from the latest wireless information bulletins. The afternoon sessions were devoted to more substantial readings of a political and literary nature. The readings alternated between works of philosophical, political, or scientific interests, and novels, chosen for, from the writings of Zola, Dumas, Victor Hugo, Flaubert, qu end quote, and he mentioned several other authors. The Tabaqueros in Vegas account also favored pieces by social theorists like Le Bon, Bruckner, Darwin, Marx, Engels, and Bakunin. According to Vega, Puerto Rican Tabaqueros interacted and worked alongside Cuban and Spaniard immigrants. Some of these people had connections to polit political activists like Jose Marti, a man integral to the liberation of Cuba, seen on the right on the screen. Many of Vega's tabaquero friends became activists and organizers themselves, like, quote, Juan Hernandez, the director of the workers' paper El Internacional, end quote, from Vega's account. Vega called his factory, quote, a university. Jose Marti wrote that, quote, factories are like colleges with their continuous reading and thinking. A web of connections and intellectualism grew out of El Barrio, beginning a tradition of political activism among Puerto Rican New Yorkers. In his account, Vega describes, quote, a major strike in the sugar industry in Puerto Rico. Tabaqueros in New York organized in solidarity with the workers in Puerto Rico. This anecdote is a common one in the world of El Barrio. Jesus Colon is a model of Puerto Rican activism born out of the cigar making industry. He was a prolific Puerto Rican writer and tapaquero in New York in the early 20th century. Describing the work of Colon, historian Carmen Teresa Whalen writes, quote, During the 1920s, Colon and the cigar workers were heavily represented in Brooklyn, where they shared internal leadership with the bodegueros, or grocery store owners, boriteros, numbersmen, the clergy, and the community's elders. During his lifetime, Colon headed more than 33 lodges and community organizations throughout New York City." End quote. Colon attributed much of his political and organizing leanings to the Tabaquero community of Puerto Rico and New York City. He wrote for leftist newspapers like The Daily Worker and popular dailies like The New York World. Before moving to New York, quote, Colon and Calle, his hometown in Puerto Rico, compatriots believe that only the workers could emancipate the working class, end quote, from Whelan's book. Movements for organizing and political solidarity in the diasporic Puerto Rican communities are no coincidence. 
Eminent leaders like Cologne learned from the Tapaquero culture of education and political theory when he moved to New York City. Jesus Colón founded La Liga Puerto Ricano y Hispana, for example, to build a coalition between Puerto Ricans and other Latino communities, communities in the city. And you can see a membership certificate on the left of the screen. According to historian Whalen, he remained faithful to the world of the Tabaqueros, in whose midst he was born and raised, to the struggles of the Puerto Rican workers and to the migrant community, especially in Brooklyn and El Barrio of East Harlem. Colón is a part of a larger pattern of Puerto Rican activism in New York City. We can trace that activism and political organizing back to the roots of these communities of migrants, the cigar making industry. La lectura, the reading of works to cigar rollers, created an environment of political and social awareness, which became especially powerful for Puerto Ricans who, in many cases, were refugees of American capitalism.